Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to this, the latest episode of the HR Tech Chat video podcast. And I am very, very happy uh, to have with me today a very good friend of mine, uh, someone you may very well know, Pete Tiliakos, and he is Global Payroll Product Strategy Leader at Alight Solutions, but that really is uh, just scratches the surface of uh, of your background, Pete. Um, welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm a fan. G- glad to be here. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you. That's uh, that's high praise, as Nick Cage would say, I believe. Um, but in any event, um, maybe you could share with our audience, for those of us, uh, those of them uh, that may not be familiar with you, just uh, your background. I know it's there's a lot of a lot of background in payroll, and I just want to maybe you could unpack that for them. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, yeah, and thanks for having me. I really appreciate being here. Um, yeah, so Pete Tiliakis, obviously you mentioned that. Uh, I'm a longtime um, payroll uh, leader in the space. I've, I've been, well, really HR as well. I shouldn't just say payroll. I've, I've done quite a few things. But um, most recently, I've been an industry analyst like yourself, uh, covering the HCM technology market and global payroll and payroll services space, uh, you know, for a couple of firms over the last five and five, almost six years. And then prior to that, had um, a very long career in um, really HR outsourcing and shared services. So as I like to say, I've, I've kind of grown up in the transformation world um, and uh, done everything from practitioner to pre-sales to sourcing advisory and consulting um, to being an industry analyst and now, you know, helping shape a product, uh, you know, here at Alight. So, um, yeah, really, really uh, it's really an exciting time to be in the industry. And it just feels like um, all that experience has kind of caught a wave, you know, in, in, in some ways. So having a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, um, very impressed with your career, and and um, you know I'll just I'll mention also you, you know I I will um, I, I credit you with sort of bringing me the last five percent in terms of understanding just to what what exactly employers of record are for instance you know yeah. I, I I said I said who would who would be good to explain this to me and I thought yeah. ah Pete and I reached out to you and you were a, a great yeah. help there so thank you very much. Um, yeah. HR Technology Conference and Expo. Uh, this is very much on everyone's mind this week. I know we a lot of us were out there last week in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay. Um, I heard somebody today say it was uh, Mandalay Bay isn't necessarily one of the um, swankiest uh, resorts out there, and that was the first I've heard I'd, I'd ever heard that. It's one of my favorites. I love that place. Yeah. They have- <laughs> have a great house band at least uh back uh, several years ago that i used to sneak out to to watch every once in a while when i was out there in vegas but um lots of really interesting stuff happening in the hr technology world and hr in general um what are what are your thoughts coming out of uh, last week's show yeah. Yeah. I thought it was great. I, I don't know about you, but um, I mean, my feet still hurt. My legs are sore <laughs> and yeah. I, I just got my voice back over the weekend. So, uh, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll admit, I did not stay up terribly late. I didn't really, I don't really drink a lot. So uh, for me, it was just the talking and the networking, just mm-hmm. the loud music, right. It, and, and the dry air, I think where, wear you out, but um, wow. What that to me, that I, I think I've been to the last seven ish or so HR tech conferences to me, that was the biggest, boldest, um, most vibrant, most alive, uh, probably event I've seen in, in a long time. Now, last year was a little bit of a, uh, a hiccup because of just everything going on. I think it was bad timing. A lot of people wanted to be back, but it, it just was weird time. But this year it was, it was spot on, right? I heard 8,500 people. That's um, what I heard too. Total mm-hmm. participants. That's incredible. Um, maybe one of the bigger ones I think I've attended. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think the cool thing we learned last week that the, there's a couple of things I think I walked away understanding is that one, um, you know, and, and a number of your, your, your peers have put data out there around, and, and you guys have as well around um, the fact that, yeah, there's a lot of talk about a, a, a recession and a slowdown and things, but what we're seeing is that talent is still very important and firms are spending yeah. money on tech and services. So um, I thought that was very, very refreshing. Um, I know I, I saw some others say this. I felt like I ran into a lot of folks that were there to to invest. Um, yeah. Big banks were there. I saw some VCs, some private equity. Um, so that was that was really positive, right? That, that shows you um, that that aligns to what we've seen so far the first half of the year and the spend that's been going on in the space still being spot on to 2021, uh, if not maybe gonna gonna pass it. So all yeah. very positive, I think, for the industry. Um, and then, of course, I think, you know, if you looked around the room, you saw a lot of the, the things that were that are important right now. And that's talent. Um, recruiting, for sure, is, w- was very well represented, as it always is. A um, lot of AI in that space. Right. A lot, a lot going on there. 
Um, and certainly around, I think, you know, learning and development, no doubt skills are absolutely imperative, right? Retaining your talent, developing your talent. So all that was huge. Um, and then, of course, we saw payroll, right? My favorite mm -hmm. area. Payroll was well represented. I, I, I think we saw all of the, you know, the, 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 the mid-market, small market players there uh, that you'd, you'd expect to see. A good sprinkling of, of global payroll providers, but also the EORs, right? The booths are getting bigger. Uh, the 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 C you know the C suites getting larger and more impressive on some of those some of those firms and so uh, I think it just underscores oh and and let's not forget earned wage access as right as well that right. was very rich there uh, I think that's become pretty much the standard in payroll you have to have that financial wellness connection and and flexibility part of it so yeah it was good to see all those things were a priority and um and uh, yeah buyers were out vendors were out everyone was having a good time and it was nice to just kind of get get everybody back together. Oh man, the the IRL uh, in real life was was just great, and the 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 also the F two F face to face. Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> um, I I had more than one opportunity uh, in the past couple of weeks to write an email that had IRL and F two F both in the same <laughs> sentence, um, and yeah. it just felt good. <laughs> um, well, you know, regarding payroll, um, yeah. uh, payroll is. I agree with you having been at the conference too, and just the conversation, the chatter, the industry chatter around payroll for the past year, especially, um, the, it, payrolls are becoming a lot more than just payroll processing. I mean, it has yeah. been for a while, uh, yeah. but there's, uh, you know, you and I, we've both been analysts. Uh, so we had to bring in the term inflection point, but yep. so I'm going to do it. Yeah, <laughs> but it yeah. feels like we're at this inflection point or we've crossed the Rubicon, if you will, right? Uh, where where payroll, payroll will never again be what it was, um, in my opinion. Uh, EWA, uh, earned, wage act, earned wage access is, is a perfect example. In uh, all it's, you know, it's kind of, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's variants, or that might not be the right word, but uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you think about you know, streaming pay, on-demand pay, um, just the the possibilities around payroll are are more today uh, than we would have even fathomed, even I'd say maybe ten years ago, for sure ten years yeah. ten years ago. Um, like, what are what are your thoughts there, like around around the um, the technological? innovation today yeah. In payroll. yeah yeah well that that's where i get goosebumps i get excited right I, I was a practitioner back in my day um you know came up in the payroll world initially in my career and um yeah i'm passionate about the industry right i, I want to see us all have a great payroll experience whether we're uh, an employee or the practitioner everyone deserves that fantastic you know um experience right it shouldn't be you know fingers crossed i hope my paycheck's right this week. <laughs> yeah. it, it should be the complete opposite right that should be the exception <clears throat> Of a, of a blunder and it should be very you know explanatory and clear what what is going on with your with your pay and so um i think it's just super refreshing to see all the money and innovation and um you know just the the focus on payroll right i think that covid certainly or or at least the pandemic time frame really i think created uh that that spotlight as you point out right where payroll became infinitely more important than what you know it had been treated as in the past and i think a lot of organizations had looked at payroll to, you know, to, to what we kind of talked about as a processing center, not really all that valuable, really just a cost, cost center, you know, a cost location that only gets more expensive and maybe even the biggest spend in the organization as far as their costs, right, their labor costs. So, um, but what we've seen is that payroll is incredibly important. It holds incredibly rich data. Um, and ultimately, despite all of that great stuff we saw in the expo room and all the great things that you learned about, if the paycheck doesn't get there for those employees, all of those bets are off. It really doesn't matter, right? You can have all the best intentions in technology, but if you don't bring all those things to the table um, in a way that makes sure the employee is whole and is being treated you know, with respect and they feel that they have control over their pay, um, it's it's not going to last very long. And so you know, what I think is super refreshing is now you're seeing uh, so much more of an emphasis being put on leveraging technology to, to alleviate the practitioner from being that sort of simple processor and making them more of an analytic um, resource to the business, allowing them to focus on, you know, projects and, you know, advancing the company, you know, the company strategy and using their data to help uh, make some positive change in the organization. And on the flip coin, you need the employee 
um, now getting, you know, that, 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 um, you know, very, very empowered experience, right? Where they do have control over uh, their payroll data and they do have control over their career and their flexibility enablers like earned wage access or what their schedules are and that sort of thing. So all that coming together, I think is just, it, it, it's great, right? It gives the practitioner a better experience, the employee a better experience, and ultimately means hopefully in a modernized state, better outcomes for the business as well. Oh, totally agree. And and two things that you mentioned, uh, two things um, sort of uh, jumped out for me uh, yeah. just now. Data, your payroll data, right? And also the um, the um, employee, the experience, the pay experience. So yeah. st- humor me for a second here. You know, it seems like the payroll is becoming more of, of an experience, right? Yeah, and yeah it, it's a great way. It's yeah. funny to think of pay as being an experience, but but I think you know in hindsight we're seeing that it that it definitely is. It, it definitely wasn't previously. Mm-hmm. Um, it was well, it was an an experience uh, by you know by the technically speaking by yeah. the you know the you know the, the, the dictionary definition of the word experience, but yeah. but um but none of the connotations that come with it with the word experience. It's just you know yeah. it was a, it was this thing that was in the background that happened every one or two weeks and if you're elsewhere in the world maybe once monthly. Um, and that's it. And uh, now because of technology you have more of an opportunity. There's 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 more yeah, there's more of an opportunity to to initiate a, an experience with your pay. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that's it. Yeah. You know, pay used to be a re, like a reactive experience, something you you something happened to you, and now pay is something that you can make happen. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, a lot of empowerment there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pa- that's a great Ooh. word. I was, I've heard that elsewhere, and I wish I could remember where because yeah, cause you're absolutely right. Some of the vendors even are using that terminology. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, that's a great way to describe it an experience. And I, th- I think that experience is still has an opportunity to even improve further. Right. I mean, if you think about um, if you think about the way in which you mentioned earlier, like just the continuous calculation methods that are a technology that's coming online. Right. The, the interconnected uh, nature and the digital nature of earned wage access. Right. Like uh, even, you know, while those are, are, are great for financial wellness, they're helping employees solve some financial wellness challenges and uh, address gaps in their, you know, maybe in their in their in their finances through to the next paycheck. I think what you're actually seeing is all of that technology, right? Those integrations, that continuous calculation, the digital native sort of payment capability is all really lending itself to the point where we're we're probably going to see pay cycles begin to break down, right? Why should I wait a month to get my paycheck when I've earned it and I have bills, right? Or I, I talked to someone the other day, you know, an executive, and he was sitting there thinking about earned wage access. And I remember him saying, he said, you know what? I wouldn't mind having a little bit of my money to invest sooner, right? For my 401k versus waiting until, you know, two, two weeks or whatever. That's, you know, net present value, right? We were all taught that. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I think that y- you're right. It is becoming an experience. And I think that the more that these things, this technology proliferates and, and straight through processing and machine learning and such gets deeper into payroll, um, I think you will see a real, a real world where we might break down those pay cycles and have uh, this democratization of payroll where employees are kind of deciding their own experience, right? When and how I get paid, when and where, and and really meeting their own uh, needs in that flexible kind of, um, you know, model that I think we're all kind of leaning towards as employers. It's very interesting. Um, yeah. just the, the payroll breaking down the payroll cycles. That's, that's fascinating to me. It reminds me of something, you know, um, that occurred to me a while back is, and this is just, <laughs> you know, it's funny how, how you go back to pre technology era, right? <laughs> Uh, like way back, let's let's say you're in the Wild West and you're yeah, a hired yeah. <laughs> cowboy, right? Um, and how are you getting paid? You're getting paid in you know pieces of silver or whatever it is. Yeah. Or, well, I guess it was an American you know, U.S. currency at that point, yeah. but yeah. but you're getting paid at the end of the day in cash. Yeah. Right. And there was there was no sort of infrastructure around payroll um around getting paid yeah and, but it's really interesting after we kind of instituted you know I, I and i'm not familiar with like the very early days of payroll technology right you yeah. know it's like you know you had the very earliest computers that wouldn't even necessarily look like computers to us today but yeah. but it was became systematized and then there was a um you know there was a uh, a necessity to go into a, a more formal cadence less yeah 
a, a less informal relationship uh, between the worker and the pay. Um, and so we ended up with pay cycles, right? And here yeah. we are today with a payroll technology having evolved for such a long time. And at some point, mm -hmm. some point, you know, this master became the servant, right? At some point, right? So for instance, in the beginning, we had the payroll cycles because the technology yeah. could really <laughs> only, or, you know, whatever it could handle, a kind of batch process. Now, yeah. Yeah. And now, and, you know, at some point, I don't know, mid 20th century, it became, you know, well, we have these cycles because or you know that we're we're we're, we're developing innovating the technology to fit the cycles <laughs> right right and yeah. so and now we have this 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 ter like i almost said terrible i guess it is <laughs> um it's probably not the right word but uh definitely not the right word but we have this these these um enormous that was, yeah. what I was looking for i, I said <laughs> terrible enormous but anyways sunk costs in these systems yeah. that are, um, frankly, against the backdrop of, of everything you're talking about, the pay experience, uh, earn, th these uh, innovations uh, in, in modern payroll, like EWA and some of the other stuff coming down the pipe, pike, like uh, streaming pay and even autonomous pay, which is very yeah. much in the distant, uh, the distant future of work, but it's coming. Yep. Um, you're right. I mean, at what point does does the uh, sort of the the existing infrastructure kind of fall away? At what point do do the do organizations reach sort of the aha moment where they're like, okay, you know what, we're not going to worry anymore about this sunk cost um, yeah. because we're actually missing out um, somehow financially more so by by clinging to it. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's actually more organizations hanging on to, to outdated sort of on-premise stuff. Right. And, and you can kind of understand, I mean, payroll is one of those things that people are afraid of, right. If they don't understand it there, you know, I would even argue there's sometimes a lack of respect for payroll in the past. It's getting better, but I think there's been a lack of respect for it because I think they didn't understand it. And so um, I think it's been one of those things. If, if it isn't broke, let's don't fix it. And so yeah, just like you have some folks that are really holding on to the bitter end with their core HR, you know, on-premise solutions, they're doing the same with payroll. Um, and and what the reality of it is, is there's a world of opportunity for their for their operating models, right? With that new technology, mm. um, it's not going to solve everything for you, right? We all know that technology is not not enough. It's just the vehicle. Uh, you've got to you've got to sort of a, consume the diet, if you will, take on the diet and and make the evolution. I, I don't like to say change anymore. I like to say evolution. You really do have to evolve yeah. yourself as an org from these past ways. But I think it's 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 doable. And I think the good the good news is is that more organizations are achieving a, a truly you know global model now, right? They're they're you know maybe they're not getting to one single vendor. They can it's possible, but some are choosing to have a few. And that's okay, but it's way better than having maybe 47 and, you know, having a different experience in every region. And yeah. uh, I think there's an opportunity now more than ever with all of this technology to bring it all together. Um, and when they modernize it, right, it, it, it gives them the opportunity to be more agile and more resilient as an organization. But, you know, going back to, to that point about, about the modern solutions, what I love about them is they're incredibly flexible, right? Like our, our offering, for example, or our uh, our solution, just like many of our peers is very modular. So you don't necessarily have to go and sort of solve all that at once. You can very much bite off the pieces and digest it as you uh, as your organization needs. So um, yeah, I would agree. There's a lot of folks that are holding on to some some outdated stuff. And as these things are coming online, we're seeing seeing adoption, but I, I think there's still a lot of runway for firms to, to, to really get themselves to where they need to be to be ready for the next you know, next volatility, right? Pandemic, whatever. <laughs> just to compete, right now you almost right. have to do this just to compete, right? Earn wage access is almost table stakes to be oh, able yeah. in certain industries to compete with someone uh, next door who you're, who, you're, who you're fighting over talent for. So, uh, to yeah. To totally agree with you on that. Um, you mentioned um, payroll getting, uh, you know, getting more, uh, not, not always having received respect, uh, yeah. you know, struggling to get respect. And, and, and to me, that's where, and we've had this conversation previously around yeah. the data, you know, first of all, there's, there's so much really, you know, uh, rich, um, very pertinent, yeah, usable, um, insightful, strategic data um, in, of all things, payroll, right? And that's it, right. it took me a while to kind of wrap my head around that, you know, I thought, oh, it's, payroll information so uh, no offense but i mean yeah. you know i kind of like think oh it's, it's just basic you know uh, but then you really think about it no that's 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 where that's where it's at is payroll data yeah. right yeah and and there are organizations uh payroll uh departments 
that are that are starting to embrace this aspect that they have this data and they can be uh they can be uh, uh they can show themselves to be of, of yeah. strategic importance to 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 leadership in the organization and yeah uh, there are some um some uh, success stories around that i know that yeah p- payroll holds a tremendous data set right and and a lot of times it's it's not understood it's also not relied upon if it's not if 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 we're talking about multiple systems data having to be brought together manually it's not going to be trusted right it's not real time it's not mm. it's not often accurate enough or um timely enough for people to act upon too so yeah you know but now right you have a lot of opportunities with integrations and cloud systems and uh much of this modern uh landscape that we've that we see coming online where firms have the ability to get at that data in you know in a moment's notice right hey yeah. cfo needs a report on <clears throat> This country or that country, we're making a decision about something. Um, that data can become very, very powerful when it comes to figuring out workforce decisions, pay, you know, looking at pay gap stuff. You know, oftentimes payroll has the most accurate data in the organization, right? It's yeah. where do we all go when we have something to change? And our, we always make sure our paycheck is right. So right. Um, yeah, that data is really rich, but I think it also takes a being it being reliable. So you need the tools to make it reliable and you need the, the tools and the understanding of how to work with it and what to do with it. Um, and if payroll can do those things and can can pivot their role away from that simple ticking tying processor to more of an analytic uh, storyteller, can help the business sort of see where there's opportunities to make some changes, maybe improve processes, maybe help them in a decision making for a, a collective bargaining agreement, or you know give them data to help them decide about about uh, you know where they expand to or something like that. That's going to be where payroll is going to level up, right? And give it mm-hmm. give it the opportunity to be more of a strategic advisor versus the you know sort of uh, simple processor of the past, and that will change the perception um, as well, right? And and hopefully it's going to take a top down sort of bottoms up approach, right? Yeah, leadership's going to have to look at payroll, give them the give them that support and the opportunity to perform, and then payroll is going to have to you know obviously step up to that challenge and and, and champion that. So, but it's exciting, right? Exciting it- to see. It is. It is. I love that term. Uh, level up. Payroll can yeah. level up. It, that you know, it, to me, it's like a, an engine room, right? On a on a big ship. You know, like it's you know, as a payroll administrator, um, if you're, you know, I, I think we can all agree that there are some very complex things that a payroll administrator must do, and so yeah. these people are professionals, um, absolutely. But at the same time. Um, it, at the same time, try try to get a uh, somebody in the C suite to to really you know have uh, take the time to listen to and appreciate yeah. that right. It's just it, this is not uh a, this is not to uh to to qualify it or anything like that. It's just this is kind of a, just one of these. That's the way it is. Yeah, uh, it's situations. Right, yeah. right. Payroll is drastically but, oversimplified for sure. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, if you can, yeah, if you can take that data. Yeah, and you can from the engine room and say, "Hey, we we can we have um, we can go X number of nautical miles, you know, if we, yeah. if we maintain our certain pace, or if we, you know, if we do this pace over this this stretch, and then that over the next, and we can yeah. we can go this far instead. All of a sudden, the um, all of a sudden the uh, you know the 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 what is it the um, what's it called where the captain is on a ship? <laughs> oh uh, yeah, the hull. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. the top, like the, the, oh, the, bridge, yeah, the bridge, yeah, yeah. The bridge, yeah, yeah, yeah the mean, captain yeah, on the yeah. bridge is like, oh, I'm not a boater. I'm not a boater. So. Yeah, neither am I. <laughs> so we, <laughs> leave it to me to bring in a, a yeah. boat metaphor. <laughs> you know, we're not, we're not uh, seafaring people. But anyways, yeah. So all of a sudden uh, the captain on the bridge sees the value of information coming from, you know, of things yeah. happening in the engine room. Right. Yeah, beyond yeah. it being an, an abstraction, you know, beyond sort of the 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 idea. Well, I hope the the um, the the engine doesn't fail because we need to, to stay yeah. on, you know, <laughs> this kind of thing, um, which is what happens uh, in sort of old style payroll where, yeah. you know, the engine fails, payroll messes up. And, and all of a sudden the C-suite has a sort of a leadership has a sort of a um, ball of wax to deal with. Yeah. Um, I, you know, data. Yep. Just to kind of go full circle on um, um, uh, on data, I had somebody asked me at the show. Uh, it was one of the large large vendors, and they were talking about um, we were talking about the future of work. Just kind of mm-hmm. riffing riffing on it, and, and they said, you know what? It's interesting. Yeah, you're saying a lot of things that we're saying, 
Um, this was the vendor speaking. Um, but one of the things we it, we struggle with is getting our 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 users Mm. to sort of to to be able to really truly truly fathom and kind of yeah. grasp and wrap their heads around this new future of work stuff that we can do. Right? Mm -hmm. They're kind of yeah. stuck in um, you know in their you know their uh, these were not his words, but these are my words, sort of Stockholm syndrome a little bit, you know, where they're, yeah. they're stuck in sort of their administrative work and, and, um, and just so focused on it and, um, and seeing that almost as their, their entire world. And he asked me, the guy asked me, uh, how can we get, how can we get in, uh, HR people to start thinking outside of that box mm -hmm. and start yeah. embracing and, and understand like fathoming understanding and then and then comprehending and then embracing some of this future work stuff and and honestly i didn't i didn't know exactly how to answer him um at yeah. first but then it occurred to me kind of on the spot okay um and and honestly uh this i drew drew on this partially from previous conversation i'd had with you around this idea of just the data right so yeah. first of all like we like we just discussed now uh payroll department can show a strategic the strategic value of payroll of people data to the organization become a yep. strategic, uh, be seen in an in elevated, they can level up in the organization, right? right? Yeah. Well, it occurred to me, if you can get HR people to focus on the data, because that's something that's readily available to them as yeah. the technology is improving ever, you know, ever so improving, you know, continually, it's getting more and more sophisticated by, by the year, by the yeah. month, right? Um, if you can get them interested in kind of, you know, waiting, like yeah. wait, like in water, waiting in the, um, I don't know what's with the water metaphor today, <laughs> waiting in the data, right? Um, yeah. You can almost kind of um, pull them into the future of work yeah. uh, without them really realizing it until they're there. Yeah, right? totally. And yeah. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that the HR's role is getting shaped the same way, right? Data is shifting. I think we've seen a bit of that. There's a lot more of the, the frontline manager is having to do a bit more of HR's sort of transactional role, it feels like. Um, and, and HR is being really pulled to do or should be really doing a lot more strategic things. And I think this data uh, insights, right, surfaced insights, predictive stuff, um, you know, really connecting the dots on external data along with HCM data um, is giving them a lot of power, right, to be able to, to be that impactful HR strategy, you know, or, you know, delivering organization that they should be. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's going to be difficult. You know, it is generational, right? There are some folks that aren't going to embrace some of this, and there are some folks who are really going to get behind it. But I think the more that you can show employees how it impacts them positively, how it's going to make their job easier, uh, make their role change in a more, I, I wouldn't even say change, shift in, in, in a way that makes them more of an analytic sort of focused uh, resource versus maybe a, a transactional kind of resource. Um, you know, for, it's not going to be for everyone. Some folks want to maybe remain in that in that old way, but um, those that are, you know, looking to kind of reskill themselves and pivot towards the future, I think will embrace that stuff. And I think they'll see that it, it has a positive impact on both the employee and the business mm. when they can use that, those insights to, 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 you know, to help people guide them to good decisions or, you know, um, bring them to, uh, you know, to a good solution. So, I think it's a win-win. And when you can show that to people, it, it, typically people are uh, obviously if they're passionate about their role, they're going to be, they're going to engage with that. So, um, but there's going to be some folks I'm sure, right. <laughs> Generationally that won't, you know, will never sort of ad adapt. And that's, you know, that just is the way human nature is, I suppose. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, there's, there's always going to be sort of an evolution in the role um, yeah. in any domain of uh, or area of the enterprise, right. This is certainly not uh, unique or exclusive to, to HR, but it's yeah, just no. interest, but it is interesting to, to think about how it's changing. You have, you have small, there, there will always be an mm -hmm. up and coming crop of small, of small companies where, yeah. where the challenges are, are, um, are very much, you know, uh, in terms of efficiencies and, uh, yeah. and administrative uh, tedium and uh, overwhelming and administrative load is you're going to, you're going to have those HR people who are living in that world perpetually not not the same people yeah but there'll always yeah. be the new sort of uh crop of them um and then you you know an organization reaches a stage where where it 
it kind of makes a shift or it kind of pivots a little bit and it and it um solves for some of that some of some of those efficiencies uh, yeah. related to or or inefficiencies excuse me <laughs> related to hr um i can't tell you how many uh user conversations uh we've had where just some of the um some of the uh some of the stories are are just you know man yeah. it's crazy you know um uh, i delivered a presentation a couple of weeks ago where we talked actually um i uh, equated it to having the blues right you know like oh. <laughs> you took some bl lyrics from old blues songs yeah. um you know some of them are pretty you know pretty like down and, out, yeah. <laughs> down and out and then we took some some quotes from our published case studies and you know it was a bit meant to be a little bit tongue-in-cheek but you know yeah. there could be an, uh, an argument made for the <laughs> cm blues right so <laughs> uh, so you have those people who are always in that situation and you really just kind of have to show them give them the new situation and then all of a sudden yeah. their eyes you know it is like their third eye opens right and they're like oh i can be so much more than uh hrs can be oh, so yeah. much more than just this administration it doesn't even have to be administration yeah well as they say discomfort is where you grow right <laughs> yeah where, you know it's where you stretch it's where it challenges you so yeah i mean i hope people are embracing this these new these new technologies and innovations you know it's a lot of people i think fear like oh this stuff is going to come and replace me and the reality of it is it's it's really never going to replace people right the uh the ai and the machine learning are all great but the reality of it is, is it's always going to take that emotional intelligence. And I think the more the practitioners can embrace how the technology can elevate their role and help them benefit the employee and the business, I think they'll, you know, I, I think you can see there's a lot of positives in it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well stated. Well stated. I'm looking at the time and that, that might be a good place to, uh, yeah. to uh, plant our flag there. Um, good deal. Yeah. Thanks so much, <laughs> Pete. It, this has been a fantastic conversation. It was great seeing you next uh, next week. It was great seeing you last week. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. well, thank um, you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm a big fan of the show and just love the opportunity. Oh, thank you very much. And and you have a podcast uh, that you've yeah. started up, HR Payroll uh, yep. 2.0. HR and Payroll 2.0. I've, I've launched that with uh, Julie Fernandez, the legendary uh, you know HR transformation yeah. advisor. Um, we are uh, doing a show where we are really doing it's brand free, sales free. We're really just doing very authentic conversations around uh, payroll and HR modernization and, and helping share really what we know, right? And what we've learned. So, so check it out. HR and payroll 2.0. You can find it on all the, all the podcast um, channels and uh, yeah, check very us out. Nice. First episode. Very nice. yeah. We'll be sure to uh, leave a link for it. Um, yeah, thank you. Post this, this episode. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Pete. It's been wonderful. Yes, sir. Thank you.